Yeah, man. So one thing I wanted to talk about on the channel today was just kind of strip down bare bones filmmaking. You know, nothing crazy, no big rigs, anything like that. Probably something you can fit in your pocket or in a small backpack. Uh, just go get your shoot done and head back to the house. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. And I absolutely apologize for that stupid intro. It's, <laughs> it's early in the morning and I don't know what I'm doing. But anyways, what we're gonna talk about today is the exact opposite of what I described in that intro. This is the Panasonic Lumix S5 on loan from my good buddy, Jordy of Wet Seal Media. He let us borrow this for a shoot that we did for a senior athlete. This is the ultimate S5 cinema rig. Let's go ahead and break that down and kind of what all that entails and why this camera really hit me out of left field. I'm gonna stick it back here real quick. <laughs> Join me in the video. As you guys know, over the past few weeks, I've really, really been looking at different options as far as cameras go for video. Really wanting to step up into a cinema style camera or a cinema style camera. Seemingly out of nowhere, Gordy has been planting this bug in my ear about his S5 and, and testing it out. And like I said, he was gracious enough to let us use it on this senior athlete shoot. Without any surprise, it was amazing. Uh, just, just to be frank about it, it was amazing. Why was it amazing? Number one, the S5 is a hybrid beast that is so compact, but packed with so many features. And on the video side specifically, this thing shoots 4K internal 422 10-bit. When you shoot it out to a recorder, such as the Ninja, you actually get 5.9K ProRes RAW. And I think with the new update, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong from Panasonic, you, would not, you now have 6K internal. I know they have it on the S1 and the S1H, but for $1,700 at the time of making this video, that is a game changer for anyone wanting to step into the video world and not break the bank with a cinema camera like the Red Komodo or the Canon C70, anything like that. And I understand that this camera is fully rigged out. You're not gonna get an S5 out of the box with a wireless transmitter, a matte box, a cinema lens, all that good stuff. But I will say this, you can buy the S5 from B&H with a Ninja. So you can be ready to shoot a high-end project right out of the box. So what all has been done to this camera to make it a quote quote cinema rig. Well, just starting from the top and going down. Number one, we have a small rig full cage. On top of that, we do have the Ninja V recorder. He has an L to PL mount with the Mikey or Mickey 50 millimeter Cine Prime, which is a great value as well. That is a cinema lens for a thousand dollars. And from what we've seen, quality is there. It's exciting in the cinema world right now or in the video world for us smaller guys who can get cinema quality and not have to pay cinema price. Um, it's very exciting for people like me. Moving on down, we have the small rig mini mat box with four by five filters in it, I believe. On the back, there's a wireless transmitter to send a feed out to another monitor for a focus puller director, whoever you wanna send it to, and a V-mount battery. So this thing is ready to go on a shoot all day long. You're not having to worry about changing out small batteries. I think on the V-mounts, Jordy said that that will last him about eight hours per battery, and he has two of them. But he can be on set all day long and not have to worry about power. And to round it all out, we have the Tilta manual follow focus, which is very nice, very smooth. I actually have the Tilta Nucleus nano follow focus, which is electronic and wireless, as you guys know. Um, but I really like the manual wheel. It's like direct gearing. It's very responsive very smooth, I enjoy it a lot. So I wanna show you guys some clips from the shoot we did the other night, it's really so you can see the performance of this camera. Now this was a very low lit situation. If you guys have ever been in a gymnasium of any sort, especially the, the gyms that have the older halogen lights, which this gym had the LED conversion, but it was still very dark in there. And this S5 has a dual native ISO. It has ISO 640, and then the high gain channel is 4000. We shot the whole shoot at 4000 ISO, and the video is so clean, it looks like we shot it at 100 or 400, whatever your base native is. Um, blew my mind, absolutely blew my mind at how clean it was in the shadows. That's something that I'm not used to shooting on the EOS R. And this is just another reason why I wanna upgrade my body for video.
But like I said, it's, it's super easy to get a killer image out of this camera. What we did for this video is we shot it in 4K ProRes HQ, I believe, obviously using Vlog. And Vlog is something that me and Jared are both used to. He used to have a GH5 that we used for our wedding shoots. I like Vlog. It's very easy to work with. It's very flat. So you're able to really push the footage and bring a lot back. With this camera specifically, we were using an ETTR exposure method, which is exposing to the right, and then you're able to pull everything back. It works perfectly. And the conversion LUT that I used in Premiere Pro was actually the old Vlog Leaming LUT conversion. So I was able to pull all this detail back and get a look that I liked using an old LUT and then some minor adjustments. Another thing that I really liked about the S5, and this is something going back to our days with the GH5, is Panasonic's IBIS is second to none. I think this one may have three to five stops of internal stabilization. Everything that we shot was handheld. I've not thrown any warp on there and it looks very natural. It looks like a natural handheld shot. It also helps that this camera is fully rigged out because it does weigh like 400 pounds. So that also helps with stability. But even at that, everything that we shot was 100% handheld not using warp i don't feel the need to because i think it looks natural it looks pleasing and the ibis in the s5 it, it saved my butt because i'm not the best when it comes to ninja walking and all that good stuff to keep things stable that was just a quick rant about the s5 and how much more confused i am now when it comes to a decision on what to upgrade to we've tested the pocket 6k pro from black magic we've now tested the s5 Still want to test the C70 and hopefully we'll get a review out for you guys on that. I'm, I'm very confused and that's why I wanted to make this video just to tell you guys how confused I am. With all that being said, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about the S5. Is it a great option? Have you used it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you have other options that you'd like for me to test out? I, I want some help. I want some advice so I can make an educated decision. Myself and Jared um, can make an educated decision on what camera to upgrade to. I appreciate all that. And if you like this video, want to see more like it in the future, Consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. I love growing this community here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one and we'll see you in the next.